Hi. In today's lecture, I'd like to talk to you about the third law of thermodynamics. Now remember, we've already talked about the first two laws of thermodynamics, right? The first law says that um, if you have a change in the internal energy of a system, then that change in the internal energy must be from either the heat or the work. And stated in terms of uh, an equation, that is delta U is equal to Q plus W, right? Where delta U is the internal energy change, Q is the heat, and W is the work. It's basically a restatement of the law of conservation of energy, right? But applied to thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics says that for all real processes, the change in the entropy of the universe must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's the second law of thermodynamics. Actually, there's a number of ways to state the second law of thermodynamics, but delta S of the universe is greater than or equal to zero is a nice mathematical equation, succinct and to the point. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the third law of thermodynamics and introduce that. So let's get started. So the third law of thermodynamics is all about what happens as the temperature approaches absolute zero. And the third law of thermodynamics basically says that at zero Kelvin, okay, a system should settle into its unique lowest possible energy state. Now, there's only going to be one way, okay, to do that. One possible lowest energy state. So that would mean that the multiplicity of that would be equal to one. And then, via the definition of entropy, S is equal to K times the natural log of the multiplicity, that would give us an entropy of zero. And so that's actually the third law of thermodynamics. Okay? All right, now, based on some of our other lectures, you might be worried about this expression going to infinity as the temperature approaches absolute zero. And remember, this was in the last lecture. We talked about how the change in entropy delta S is equal to the integral of CV dt over T, right? So then you have the... Uh, natural log of T final over T initial, right? Things get crazy, in other words. So to fix this problem, what we're going to say is that the heat capacity of a system must approach zero as the temperature approaches zero. So that would be another way to state the third law, if you'd like, right? It also means that some of the expressions that we derived in the last lecture for everyday type changes aren't really going to work as the temperature approaches absolute zero. But honestly, that's kind of fine because a lot of things change in the physics as you approach absolute zero. And physics gets pretty weird at those very low temperatures. So I think it's okay, right, that we would have to adjust our heat capacities and some of the other expressions, which were developed really to deal with, you know, more normal temperatures for our everyday experience. Speaking of not normal temperature approaches, um, there's a few problems with the third law of thermodynamics, right? There's a few problems with it. And I'm sure you could see some of them right away. First of all, we've never actually reached absolute zero. So that's a problem, right? If we're saying that S is zero at absolute zero, okay, but you can't get to absolute zero, right? Well, it's true. There are some labs out there um, that are working really hard on kind of chasing absolute zero, not really as an end of them in and end in and of itself, but for the physics, the really awesome physics that happens at those low temperatures, okay? So for example, the world record for the lowest temperature achieved in a lab was set in Helsinki in a group in the low temperature laboratory, and they did a temperature of 100 picokelvin in a rhodium metal sample. And they did this to research what happens to the magnetic moments of rhodium at low temperatures. This picture on the right is actually from their website, um, and it's a picture of their refrigerator, if you will, um, and what's going on there. And if you'd like to learn more about that, I highly um, recommend it, and you can check out those links that I've posted there um, and check out their website. But in a general way, what they would have to do is first chill things with uh, liquid nitrogen and then maybe liquid helium and then use laser cooling to go further. Um, it, that's one way to do it. And I think they have a special um, uh, method where they um, use a bleed off cryostat kind of purification method to do it. Um, other labs, like the ones at um, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, they use laser cooling. So that's cool. All right, so that's one problem. 
right, with the first third law of thermodynamics. We can't actually reach absolute zero. So it's kind of theoretical, really, because you're never going to get there. There's another problem with the third law. Even at super low temperatures, real systems have a bit of randomness associated with them. So even at extremely low temperatures, they get kind of frozen into these random orientations and there's going to be more than one possible random orientation that they could get frozen into. So what do I mean by that? Well, real solids aren't perfect, uniform, gorgeous crystals. They're just not, okay? Real solids um, look more like this picture at top right, okay? So um, this picture at top right shows a uh, very smooth metal surface and these um, kind of domains here are domains with different crystalline orientations. And so you can imagine that you have a crystal here and then a, a crystal made of the same material but kind of rotated sitting right next to it. And those two different things are called the domains. And so that's what's happening in real materials. It's actually extremely difficult to get a single crystal material. Um, just ask those folks that are trying to do you know, semiconductor fabrication about that. So um, the crystalline grains with different orientations are one kind of randomness associated with the system. Another randomness that's even harder to avoid than that would be uh, point defects and impurities. Um, it's almost impossible to completely purify a metal, right? You're always going to have impurities in there um, just because it's extremely hard to completely isolate it. Let's, let's say that you're trying to uh, get a nice gold sample for, you know, whatever, to make a nice ring. Um, you're going to have to purify that, right? When it's mined, it's not actually pure gold, of course, right? And then you're going to have to remove the impurities in steps. But just like approaching absolute zero, you'll never really get there. It's really hard to get those impurities out. So you'll always have dopants. Another thing that you'll always have is defects where you have vacancies, or interstitial atoms or atoms that are kind of out of place in a crystalline sample. And that's shown here in these images, okay? So these little holes are vacancies and then you have little point defects and that kind of thing. So those things never really go away. So these kinds of problems contribute to what's called residual entropy in a true material even at absolute zero. So to get around all of those problems that, ha that happen with the third law of thermodynamics, um, you'll sometimes see the third law stated in this way, and I'm quoting here. The entropy of a perfect crystal of a pure substance approaches zero as the temperature approaches zero. Okay. <laughs> so if that's not a dodge, I don't know what is, right? Of course, there are no perfect crystals of pure substances. They're not. Um, in material science, if you take that course, we say that the number of defects is actually, actually represented by decaying exponential. And so that decaying exponential decays, but never gets to zero, right? So you can pick your imaginary scenario that you like for the third law of thermodynamics. Tomato, tomato, right? <laughs> um, so the entropy of a pure crystal, perfect substance, perfect crystal pure substance approaches zero as the temperature approaches absolute zero. So there you go. So I've often heard this joke for the three laws of thermodynamics, right? It says the first law of thermodynamics is that you can't win. The second law of thermodynamics is you can't break even. And the third law of thermodynamics is there's no point in trying. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> anyway, it's a joke. All right, um, I hope that made sense to you. If you have any questions, let me know, and as always, I'll see you in class.